operating various types of model steam boilers. Part 4, the Scotch return tube boiler. This type of boiler is quite efficient. It's a cross between a centreflue boiler and a fire tube boiler. Even though the designs vary, the principle is still the same. Here is a centreflue with all of the water pipes really neatly radiating. This boiler, as you can see, is very well made indeed, and the principle in the centreflue is very much like the Stuart Models HB6 boiler arrangement that I showed in a previous episode. Steam boilers are heat exchangers, and in this centreflue, with having all the cross water tubes radiating like this, it presents a greater surface area to the flame that goes down the centre of this flue. When you first see a Scotch return tube boiler, it looks very strange because the chimney comes out of the same end of the boiler as the fire that goes into it. This is a very well made Scotch return tube boiler, so I can simply remove the chimney to show you what's inside. The chimney mounting is held to the boiler with three nuts. This simplicity is not always the case on some Scots return tube boilers. It's often a difficult job to remove the chimney housing, but not so on this one because it's designed well. As you can clearly see, I've disconnected the chimney pipe first because it would be quite difficult to remove it with that still attached. To be perfectly honest, this boiler is wasted on this Stuart Victoria, which needs very little steam. When I remove the chimney mounting, you can see that there are two more flues above and at each side of the main centre flue. The design of Scotch return tube boilers can vary. Often there will be a lot of fire tubes in this area, but on this one there are just two plain flues. The inefficiency of two plain flues is more than compensated for with the complexity of the radiating water tubes in the centre flue. I don't know what this boiler is, but this looks like a commercial unit. Either way, it's very well made. Turning the boiler round, I'm going to show you what's in the other end. It takes a while to slacken off these fittings, they're quite long. Eventually though, both of them are removed, and it's now an easy job, or it should be, to open the door. Fastened to this door is a baffle plate. This is definitely required as a heat sink, because the gas burner is directly pointing down the centre flue, at this door. So what's with the coil of copper tubing? This is a superheater coil, and as it's very close to the middle of the centre flue, it's heated directly by the flame of the burner. If you look at the two connectors at the top, the left hand side one is the wet header. I'll show you it in more detail from outside the boiler. Here's the main steam pipe. This is what's called wet steam coming straight from the boiler. The pipe is clad in some insulation material. This pipe is connected to the fitting at the front of the boiler, which in turn is connected to the coil that I showed you in the last clip. The output from the coil goes to a tap and then to the inlet on the steam chest of the engine. In this clip I'm illustrating the principle, hopefully without burning my fingers. Even though I've turned down the gas pressure, there's a lot of heat coming out of these two tubes above the main centre flue and exiting the centre flue inside the other end of the boiler is a great deal more heat. As I mentioned earlier, in the design of this boiler there are two return tubes, but sometimes there are multiple fire tubes. Here to illustrate the fact that both the heat and the products of combustion are returning down these tubes, when I hold my small blowtorch in front of these flues, the flame is extinguished and I can't light it in this position. This boiler will generate a great deal of steam. The Stuart Victoria is equipped with a water pump, which replenishes the water that it uses in the boiler. But the boiler always remains at the same pressure. Scotch return tube boilers are really good in marine applications. I'm half tempted to dismantle this plant and use this boiler in a model boat. But then again, I may leave it as it is. This is one of my favourite steam plants. I like the Twin Victoria, that's on a much bigger scale. The quality of engineering on this one though is very impressive. Whoever built this engine and boiler and assembled it really did know what they were doing. Even down to the fact that there isn't a water bypass valve on the pump's outlet. The physical size of the pump and the size of the pump ram is designed to replace the water in the boiler that's been used by the engine when the engine is running at a moderate speed. I've removed the burner and I'm refitting the chimney assembly. 
If you take a close look at this clip, you will see how well made the engine is. Even the boiler cladding is very nice. And it's not new, it's quite an old engine, so it has a patina that makes it look even better. When I first bought this plant, the only thing I did was fit a new safety valve. This is a commercial one made by Jubilee Fittings. That's about it for this episode, so now you know what a Scotts return tube boiler is. And more importantly, how it works. Time for me to go, I'll leave the engine running. Stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.